Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE PE lesson. Today we'll move on to the third topic in Chapter 4, Short-Term Effects of Exercise. As always, we'll be following learning objectives straight from the Cambridge syllabus and we'll learn everything you need to know for your final exam. Our learning objectives today are to identify the immediate effects of exercise on the body, to describe what happens to the body during exercise, and to explain the negative effects that impair performance. We're all aware that the body adapts in response to exercise, but what are the immediate effects of exercise on the body, and what are the physiological reasons behind these changes? Many of the effects that we'll explore today can be identified by simply observing how our own bodies respond to exercise. You can probably think of several already, so why not pause the video now and make a list of what you already know. There are eight short-term effects that you need to be able to name and describe, and we'll tackle all three learning objectives together as we work through the list. Perhaps the most obvious response to exercise is an increase in heart rate. This allows more blood and oxygen to be delivered to the working muscles, allowing us to convert glucose into energy at a much faster rate. This mechanism is regulated by the hormone adrenaline, which is released during exercise and causes the heart to beat even more quickly. Breathing rate also increases as we start to exercise in response to the increased demand for oxygen in our muscle cells. The faster we breathe and the deeper our breaths, the more oxygen can pass from the lungs into the bloodstream via the alveoli, where it can be transported by the action of the heart. Since the processes of muscular contraction and respiration both produce heat, it's no surprise that body temperature begins to rise when we exercise. This response must be regulated as enzymes lose their function at higher temperatures, affecting the ability of our muscles to contract efficiently. Our next two responses serve to rid the body of some of that heat energy. Firstly, our skin turns red as blood vessels close to the skin become enlarged, allowing warm blood to flow to the surface and heat to be lost to the atmosphere through radiation. We also start producing sweat, which evaporates from the surface of the skin, taking body heat with it. Sweating is particularly effective as water is actually 25 times better at conducting heat away from your body than air, hence why you feel so cold when stepping out of a swimming pool. Our next effect of exercise is fatigue, which can be defined as extreme tiredness resulting from physical exertion. When performing anaerobic activities, such as sprint cycling, lactic acid accumulates in our fast-twitch muscle fibers, reducing the amount of force that they're able to produce over time. This effect is localized to the muscles being used, so fatigue will be felt in the legs, but not the arms when completing a series of squats. Aerobic activities such as long distance running can also cause you to tire, however. Although slow twitch fibers can work for several hours at low intensities, the fuel source glucose will become depleted over time and fatigue will be felt throughout the body as energy production slows. Our next effect is less common than those discussed so far and occurs when we stop exercising, particularly if we overexert our bodies through high intensity work. Nausea or the inclination to vomit occurs as blood flow is diverted away away from the digestive system and towards the working muscles where the demand for oxygen is higher. Digestion in the stomach slows down and we can feel sick as a result, explaining why you shouldn't eat a large meal if you're planning to be active soon after. Dehydration can also make you feel nauseous, while drinking too much dilutes levels of electrolytes or minerals in your system, preventing them from working correctly. Our final short-term effect of exercise is lightheadedness or dizziness. We know that during exercise, the heart works harder to pump more blood around the body, and this causes the blood vessels to enlarge to allow for the stronger blood flow. Heart rate drops when you stop exercising, but your blood vessels may take longer to return to their normal size, resulting in a reduction in blood pressure. This slows down the transportation of blood to the brain as it has to fight against gravity, causing us to feel dizzy. Fortunately, there are some simple techniques that can be used if you experience this effect after exercise. Deep breathing increases the amount of oxygen entering the body, while lying down and elevating your legs helps the blood that's collected there to flow back to the heart, where it can be redistributed throughout the body. Now that we've covered everything you need to know, the only thing that remains is to apply your knowledge to exam questions. Why not pause the video to attempt this one and be sure to make two distinct points, one for each available mark. The skin reddens during exercise as body temperature increases. This occurs as the blood vessels close to the skin become enlarged, causing more blood to flow to the surface where it can be cooled by the air. The first statement demonstrates your core knowledge and you'll be awarded a mark for this. In order to show a deeper level of understanding, 
tanning, however, you'll need to provide an explanation of the process that causes your skin to turn red. If you'd like to try more questions like this one, you can find a link to the Cambridge Pass Paper database down in the description. Well done, you've just covered everything you need to know on topic 4.3, short-term effects of exercise. Subscriptions, likes and shares will help more people discover this content, so please take a moment to do that if you haven't already done so. As always, I hope you found this lesson useful and I'll see you in the next one.